my name is Doug Hubble and welcome to Astrophotography Tutorials. I get this question frequently. Uh, people ask me how can I take this type of photo and what equipment is required to take this type of photo. Well in astrophotography there's basically three main groups. I mean you have planetary imaging, you have DSLR wide field, and you have deep sky. Now each one of those has their own special requirements and what I'm going to do today is just kind of do an overview of the hardware equipment that's required to uh, take those types of pictures. Now keep in mind astrophotography there really isn't any rules. I mean you could take your cell phone out right outside, take a shot of the moon, hey you're astrophotography you're done right? Real easy but a lot of times people like you and me we want to try to get a little bit more. So let me uh, do a little bit of uh, examples of what photos you can get and then also review the equipment that's required to take these types of photos. Planetary imaging that is the least expensive uh, astrophotography to get started in. Uh, the equipment required here isn't anything special any kind of telescope uh, you can use the one thing that you do need is you need a video camera on a video camera they, they sell them as planetary dedicated video cameras and you could even uh, get a web camera convert it into a, uh, uh, a planetary camera and just take video with that so this is like I say the least expensive but you only have a few targets uh, you, you have uh, basically the moon you have Jupiter and you have Saturn. Uh, the moon is really a, a, a very good target. You have all kinds of phases of the moon and it, if you like planetary this may be a perfect uh, setup for you. It, but one thing I would uh, tell you to consider is if you think you may decide to go one step further. Uh, that's always the, the thing with astrophotography is like if you can plan for future uh, upgrades that you may or may not decide to do it's kind of nice to purchase things that you can use not only for right now but maybe in the future so if you decide to go a step up you can do that easily. DSLR wide field. Now DSLR wide field is a little bit more expensive because you have to first buy a DSLR camera and while you can take shots uh, on a just with the tripod with the stock lens uh, you probably will want to get a wide field lens like this uh, Rokinon here it's got a very wide uh, deep uh, field right there it's really nice to have uh, the advantage with the DSLR is that if you, you know just start it off with on a, on a tripod you get these these images that are really great I mean you can even uh, take uh, terrestrial shots and the terrestrial shots look really fantastic with night photography but you have to put it on a tripod because of the longer exposures that are required now another good thing about the DSLR is that if for whatever reason you you like it and you want to continue then you can get a T adapter which allows you to then take the lens off and then put that on the end of your telescope if you decide to go on to the next step deep sky now deep sky is my favorite. Oh, wait, what, what, what? Ah. I'll tell you, the, the one thing with deep sky is there one basic requirement, and that basic requirement is an auto guider port. You have to have an equatorial mount with an auto guider port. I get this question frequently, and people come up to me and ask. I want to take a deep sky photo and I have this mount and I ask them does your mount have an auto guide port and they say no and then they say well I spent a thousand dollars on this setup and you mean I can't do this yes that's true you have to focus on an equatorial mount with an auto guide port uh, don't worry about the telescope don't buy those telescope packages focus on an equatorial mount with an auto guider port and you 
will be able to take deep sky photos. That is the very first step in taking deep sky photos. I realized this was just a quick overview of uh, the hardware requirements. I didn't go into much detail, but uh, the, the points that I brought up were, were very important. For planetary imaging, you got to have a, a, a video camera of some sort, and uh, any telescope will do. The uh, DSLR, most people, a lot of people have DSLRs already. All you need is a stationary tripod. Just put it on there, point it at the sky, take a shot. Really easy. Uh, if you want to get a wider shot, then of course you can buy a lens and put it on there. Now, deep sky is a, it's so important. Um, if you want to take deep sky images, uh, you're going to have to have an auto guider port on an equatorial mount. Uh, that is your primary focus. Forget about everything else. Get that uh, auto guider port. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, please go ahead and post them in the comments below, and I'd be uh, more than happy to uh, uh, discuss those with you. If you have an astrophotography tip or trick you would like to share on astrophotography tutorials, please contact me at dhubble at gmail.com and I will help you get started and we'll share your tip or trick. If this is your first time watching, I would like you to subscribe. I publish two astrophotography videos on the 1st and 15th of every month. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you soon.